Good morning. Uh, welcome to the subcommittee uh, on zoning and franchises. Uh, I am uh, Francisco Moya, the chair of the subcommittee, and today we are joined by uh, Council Members Donovan Richards and uh, Council Member Barry Gradenchek. Um, I know Council Member Lansman was, was here as well. Um, today we will be holding uh, hearings on two items, uh, LU 36, the 20, uh, 21 East 12th Street parking garage, and LU 3534 Underhill rezoning. After our public hearing, we will be uh, laying over both of the items for consideration at our next meeting. Uh, but before we start our hearing, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Deputy Counsel uh, for Land Use uh, Division, uh, Dylan Casey, uh, who will be leaving the council at the end of the week. Uh, he's going to start a new chapter out in uh, sunny California, and uh, he will be working on fair housing and related uh, policy issues, and we want to thank him for his excellent uh, work during his tenure here, and he will be greatly missed, and we want to wish him all the best, and in the short time that uh, I've been the chair and, and been here at the council, he has been a uh, vital vital um, individual that has uh, helped guide uh, this committee um, to doing the great work uh, that we do in uh, the City Council. So Dylan, to you, we, we thank you for uh, your excellent work and wish you very much success in your new endeavors. Uh, we will start uh, with the 21 East 12th uh, Street parking garage application. Uh, this is an application for a special permit under sections uh, 13-45 and 13-451 uh, of the zoning resolution to allow for an attended parking garage with a maximum capacity of 187 spaces. The garage will be located on the ground floor uh, cellar and subcellar of a proposed 21-story mixed-use building to be located at 21 East 12th Street in Council Member uh, Rivera's District in Manhattan. I will now open the public hearing on LU 36. And we have we have William Mac is it Maclow I Maclow Robert Flahive say it correctly Gordon Ham. Okay, good morning. Thank you. Please. Good morning. Wow. Okay. Uh, I am Billy Macklow. I am the developer of 21 East 12th Street, and I would like to thank the council for the time uh, to let us speak this morning and the consideration. So good morning and thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm devel the developer of 21 East 12th Street. As you can see on the monitor in front of and behind me, that was what existed on the site at the time when we acquired it and set about our plans to demolish that structure and begin construction of what is nearing completion today. That was for close to 100 years, specifically the last 40 years uh, as well, a garage. A garage that had a capacity of about 200 cars and four curb cuts, two on 12th Street and two on University Place. We have developed and planned and built our building as an as-of-right structure with the exception of the garage. We have 53 residential units we are currently 77% pre-sold, and we seek the council's approval to replace the parking uh, that was there, albeit for 187 cars, less than the 200 that have been there for the preceding 40 years. And in the process of our development, we've also cleaned up the streetscape by getting rid of three of those four curb cuts. 
So we've enhanced University Place, we think, um, from a safety perspective, as it's a very high-volume pedestrian area. University Place will now be safer. We've put our curb cut, our proposed curb cut and garage on the northwestmost corner of our site on 12th Street. And uh, we have a great hope that this will be passed by the council, and I will turn it over to uh, Mr. Flayhive and Mr. Ham to my left. Gordon has operated this garage, as I said before, for 40 years prior, and it is his desire to continue. So, gentlemen. Thank you, Billy. Good morning, uh, Chairman Moya uh, and committee members. My name is Bob Flayhive. I'm with the firm Crame 11. We represent the applicant for the special permit. As uh, Mr. Mackerel indicated, the, um, the 200 car public parking garage with curb cuts on East 12th and University had existed since 1921. It also had been operated by Garage Management Corporation. It's a union shop and, and, and that operator had operated the previous garage for 40 years and is the prospective operator of this new garage as well. Um, however, the current zoning regulations governing parking in a Manhattan core does not provide an as of right mechanism for a replacement garage. And therefore, we had to file an application seeking a special permit pursuant to section 13451 that permit additional parking for residential growth in the neighborhood. Now, in creating the uh, special permit, it's called additional parking for residential growth. In 2013, the Planning Commission and the City Council established specific standards for what's called neighborhood parking demand, quote unquote. It's basically a two-part test that measures residential parking demand in the area and the parking supply within the designated area. Let me uh, move along. In, in terms of residential parking demand, our application documents that a total of 769 new residential units were developed in a study area since 2006. At the 20% target level, these 769 dwelling units generated demand for 154 new residential parking spaces. However, only three of the 41 new buildings that have been built in this area actually provide parking. And those three parking garages provide only 21 parking spaces. Therefore, on the demand side, there's a, a significant parking deficit. In terms of parking supply, which is now shown um, behind me, uh, we've documented that 1,259 spaces in 10 parking facilities within the study area have been demolished since 2006 to make room for new development. Um, as you can see on the map, our site is highlighted in red, and on that block alone, our block alone, Three garages with a total of 735 spaces were demolished or conver converted to residential use. That's just on our block. The, uh, within the study area shown in the black circle includes um, all 1,260 spaces that have been demolished. The combination of increased residential demand and the reduction in parking supply translates to an existing parking ratio it's a zoning term, for the study area of minus 92%, minus 92%, which is well below the target of plus 20%. Um, these are kind of zoning terms, so let me put it in layman's terms. The current parking deficit for the neighborhood totals 843 spaces. This deficit includes 113 spaces attributable to new residential developments that have not provided any parking, plus a 730 residential parking spaces that have been demolished. The proposed 187 car garage will only address a small fraction, about 22% of this parking deficit. Uh, zoning resolution sections 1345 and 13451 provide the City Planning Commission and City Council with authority to grant special permits for additional parking spaces to serve residential growth in the Manhattan core, subject to specific findings. Uh, we believe that the material submitted with this application provides sufficient documentation to make each of the required findings and allow you to approve the special permit for the proposed garage with 187 spaces. Thank you.
My name is Gordon Ham. Uh, I operate the garage and did for 40 years. Um, as a past councilman in New Jersey, I appreciate everyone's time today. And uh, this is a more emotional, I think, for a lot of people in the neighborhood. Um, we just talked about the facts of what it is over there, but to give you a, uh, a guideline, I, I always thought that being there 40 years, we were kind of a fabric of the community to begin with. We uh, serviced most, almost 90% of our uh, business was from the neighborhood residents. So we watched people have kids, raise kids, bring them through, park their cars, uh, next generation come through all the time. Uh, I always thought we provided a, a healthy, safe environment for people in the neighborhood that wanted to come down and unload stuff. We know how long it is, it takes with kids and stuff and strollers and things and, and bad weather to have a place to be able to go to in the neighborhood without traveling too far away. Um, it was a sad day when we closed the garage, but we thought maybe when we're closing the garage, it's no different than someone renovating their apartment. They, they may take a couple of years to renovate the apartment, but they'd be allowed to come back. So um, we're kind of hoping we're kind of like that part of that neighborhood and still to be able to come back and service the neighborhood with everybody. Um, you, you heard already testimony about the uh, number of spaces lost on that block. Um, we're trying to get the same number of spaces we had before because we think that there is a definite need. I know that when we had to displace those monthlies, we could only take about 50 of them, and those were we had to move to our locations over by Washington Square Park. Um, a number of them are just been waiting and waiting, even though they have to walk a long distance all the time for the garage to reopen. Um, we only see it as a positive, obviously, and you'll hear testimony, I'm sure, from the other side saying negative. But as you see with City Bike taking more space on the street, the off-street parking's getting less. Um, a number of people do love to park off-street. It's cheaper, obviously, and, and it serves them. They can find a space, and other people prefer to be able to just drive in, drop their car off, keep it out of the weather, and keep it safe. And some, some, Many people like to have their car washed or cleaned by the men, which is you know another service they add always. But um, w w we always felt like we were part of that community and stuff. So we're asking everyone to consider us to come back into our house, let us be part of the fabric again, and, and let us put the men back to work that we had. We had a union shop. All our shops were union. Uh, we had to displace seven men, and we're, you know, those seven men are hoping to come back and have a job again and uh, be part of the uh, community also. So uh, I want to thank you for your time, and thank you for listening. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for your testimony today. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that we are joined by Council Member Reynoso and uh, Council Member Rivera. Wait, I know that we've gotten a chance to connect before the hearing, and thank you everyone for being here. So just a couple of very quick questions. I, I wanted to know whether is on the timeline, and I'm sorry if you answered this, but on the timeline of things, is it is it done? Is the garage completed? The building that's under construction uh, today um, is almost complete. It provides what's called the as of right parking garage in the second cellar, the sub cellar, for 15 spaces. If the special permit application is approved, the same ramp system will provide service to the proposed garage as it does to the as of right garage. Um, the difference would be instead of having on the first cellar below grade retail and storage, we will convert that to parking. That's how we will increase it up to the proposed 187. So yes, the ramps are in place for the as of right garage. Okay, and then for the other spaces, if, if, if you were given more spaces, what is the anticipated timeline of completion? I think the uh, timeline for the completion is the same. Uh, we're, we're, we're under construction now. We're just about fully enclosed. We're anticipating making application for our first temporary certificate of occupancy uh, mid to late fourth quarter of this year. And that first TCO would be for sub-basement through the fifth floor. So I want to talk, thank you, I want to talk a little bit about the community board resolution that was passed and I want to know where the, was there anything that your team did in anticipation of the resolution? So for example, was there anything that you tried to address that they pointed out in one of their 19 whereases? Um, I have the resolution. Um, th there was actually a, 
uh, call it a robust discussion. It occurred over a two-month period. Uh, we met with the committee twice. We also met with a, a small subcommittee, a two-member subcommittee, twice, so a total of four times. Um, up until the night of passing the resolution, we had discussed um, at the committee's request, they wanted a commitment that we would give preference for residential parking, and that preference would be in the form of a reduction that for some period, the 15% reduction we agreed to. We were offering a one-year period. They were offering a five, they were requesting a five-year period. The purpose of that reduction would be to draw residential parkers back into our garage, can which I, is can our I intent. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to, in a reduction, like a discount. Yes. Okay. Um, they also asked that we would make a commitment to uh, provide a certain amount of shared vehicles. Um, and Mr. Ham can speak further to this, but quickly, the, the previous garage had 30 zip car type operations, and we would be prepared to go as high as 50 on, a, on the belief that that provides another service to the community. It also is good business because that model, the parking model, is changing. Um, we also agreed that within the, uh, a 600 foot area, if any resident looks for a space in our garage, we would provide such a space on 30 day notice. This was to address the community's concern that how did they, how could they be assured this wouldn't become a transient parking to serve tech center and other, other projects in the area. And we had told them that you know, we have a 40 year history of being a residential garage. The garage is laid out for monthlies. We have 53 stackers. So our hope is people come, leave their car, and take it the next weekend. You know, we're not, we're not looking for in and out transient parking. So we agreed that we would provide a preference to any resident within uh, 600 feet to, to get a space on a monthly basis. <coughs> um, oh, I thought my time was up. The last two. <laughs> we also said we would make that discount available to anyone within a 600 foot area. Again, emphasis on residential parking. Finally, um, the, uh, we also agreed to inc uh, increase the number of bike parking, double it actually from what's required. They also asked that we uh, uh, discount the rate by 50%, which we agreed to. Um, although the operator did feel we should put a caveat in there if there is a demand, because his experience has been with city bike, it's much easier for the person not to own a bike and just store it on the street than to actually own a bike and then have to pay fifty or hundred dollars a month to store it, you know, a block or two away. Um, and then we also agreed that we, we would uh, post those regulations in the garage so that there'd be an ongoing, um, uh, you know, set of commitments. Um, that night there was a lot of discussion by uh, by the community board, um, and then to be honest, for the first time they raised the issue that in 2013 they disagreed with the zoning and came up with the idea that reverting back to their old resolution, they would cap it at 53 spaces, um, which completely took us by surprise. Um, and, and then they went ahead with their, their resolution that includes you know, a, a mix of, of, I guess, our response as well as their belief about parking as a policy. You know, we really felt that our application being a pl replacement garage and in view of the parking data is meets the findings. The uh, committee resolution focuses a lot on parking, which is, you know, they feel is, is parking is not a contributing element to the community and draws commuters. We do not believe that in our experience for the last 40 years does not reflect that. So you felt that leading up to the final vote that at first you thought the the board would be comfortable with the 150 plus spaces or were you trying, were they looking for you to meet in the middle or just to uh, provide 55 for the number of units in the building? There had been no discussion up until that night of reducing 187. Okay. We were trying to provide everything we could to encourage them to um, support the full application. So to answer your question, there was no discussion of a reduced number. So you're still willing to provide the local discount to residences, correct? Yes, yes we are. And, we're, and we also want to continue with the ride share programs we had because it was, you know, used a lot over there. In fact, uh, it was a, 
a big turnaround when they were talking about being busy. It was mostly due to the, the uh, zip cars or Hertz car going around and stuff, people from the neighborhood using it. And as of late, we've had a, a good number. We talked about this before, of uh, putting in the charging stations. Tesla's been giving them to pretty much every operator <laughs> that they can. Do. It's where they sell Tesla. They tell you where to go to plug it in. We had one on uh, 7th and West 10th that, in fact, he brought his own in and installed it with his own electrician and put a meter on it so that it's his and no one else can use it. You don't have to worry about anybody else charging and stuff. So we, we want to continue again. This is a kind of a give back we've always had with the community. Well, I want to go back to, because I, I mean, I'm not sure the garage is going to bring lots of Teslas into Central Village, but we'll I We'll get two or three. Um, so I just want to go back to the local discount. Are you providing a local discount to people in the area for one year or five years? We, we were talking with the one year. We were open to negotiate somewhere in the middle. And, you know, if it was two or three years, we were fine with that. I think what happened was it kind of stalled a little bit on the back and forth, mm -hmm. and it kind of got rigid, and we didn't have the ability really to go back and forth with that. But uh, as the operator, I can say I did, at least uh, I would do three years. And the bike spaces, how many? What? The uh, required number is 19, which is in our plans. Uh, we have developed a uh, layout that can accommodate double that number, 38. And we would continue but the 50 percent on them uh, for the neighborhood. We don't need to have a time limit on that. Okay, 50 percent discount in yep. perpetuity. You can put that down. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the people that are here today. So you mentioned there are seven, with the previous garage, there were seven positions, correct? That's correct. And there are 32 BJ and Teamsters? Uh, the garage is actually the Teamsters. Okay. The, the building will be 32 oh, Of BJ. course, building workers. Okay. How many um, jobs in, in for building workers do you anticipate providing? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're, 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 we're concluding our negotiations with, with, with Local 32B, okay. the staff, the building, and uh, I wish not to, to misquote a number, but it's, it's an appropriately staffed and a fully operated building that's 100,000 square feet, so you, they, I'm sure they'll let me know. They can <laughs> remind us, yes. Okay. All right, so uh, seven Teamsters in the garage and 32BJ, you're still working on your contract. Okay, so... Um, I know that we, we've checked in about this, and the reason why I ask about the resolution is because, you know, it's, it's pretty extensive. I realize there are some things mentioned in there that are related to the neighborhood at large and what they're going through as, as, as a neighborhood in terms of development, in terms of changes, and their, their desire for preservation for what's left. So I just wanted you to address some of those things. I, I think that there's probably room for us to, to keep talking about what, what we can do in terms of the garage and working with the community. So I wanted to thank you for answering my questions. And if there's anything else, I'm sure I can follow up with you. That's okay? Great. Th thank you for the time and consideration. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yep. Uh, Council Member Gudenchik. The space was Obviously, you have a basement. What would you do with this space if it doesn't become a garage? I think we would look to expand our retail program. Currently, our, our hope for the building was to um, populate the retail we've developed or are developing with something that's more neighborhood and consistent with the surroundings. Uh, if we have to rent the basement for a different economic aim than the garage, then we'll expand retail. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're also joined by uh, Council Member uh, Steve Levin. Uh, the Councilwoman had an additional question. Yes, so before you tore down the garage to start construction, was were the 200 spaces fully occupied? Yes, they were. Okay, and so you said you might expand your retail program, but there was also, I believe, discussion as to creating storage as well, right? Storage and retail? Correct. And so <clears throat> one thing I would say about retail is because of our, unfortunately, our vacancy problem. If, if whatever you decide for the ground floor, if you do go with the retail program, that you would try to make it as affordable as possible or not as large, so that way we can see more individual um, retail mom and pops that, that are a little bit more unique than the average 
corporate chain that has been going into the larger spaces. But I'm sure we, we agree with that point of view, and that's how we've designed the retail currently. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that that basement sees cars, not handbags and shoes. But uh, currently, we're, 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 we're hopeful to, to be more considerate of neighborhood consistency. Thank you. I'd like to thank you uh, for coming in today and, and testifying and um, wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm gonna call the next uh, group, Raymond Perez, David Soto, and Matthew Focolari. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Raymond Perez, and I'm a building service worker at uh, SEIU 32BJ union member. I am here today to testify, testifying on behalf of my union, 32BJ is the largest property service worker union in the country. We represent 85,000 building service workers in New York City. Over 33,000 of us work in the residential building like the one McLeod is proposing to develop at 21 East 12th Street. I work at ele uh, 411 East 10th Street in the same district where this project is nearby. 32BJ SEIU supports responsible developers who are committed to supporting working families. I am here today to offer our support for my Laos proposal where the development team has committed to creating high quality permanent building service jobs. These jobs will pay family sustaining wages that will allow workers at 21 East 12th Street to continue to call New York home. The project will also create good jobs in the parking garage operated by our brothers of the Teamsters Union. Our union applauds the, the development team at this project for productive conversations and commitment to good jobs. 32BJ believe this project will contribute to the continuing success of the area by providing stable wealth paying jobs. The good jobs created at this development can help New Yorkers out of poverty and allow workers at the site to support their families and continue to call New York home. For this reason, we encourage the council to approve this project. Thank you. Good morning. My name is David Soto. I'm also SIU 32BJ union member. And I will also like to echo all the union is support Michael Lewis uh, proposal, the development in 21 East 12th Street. I live around in the neighborhood too. Uh, Michael has history, is responsible development through the city, throughout the city. And the median are building one Michael large of building. 32 BG represent the cleaning workers. Those members have a good family standing job that provide the priv privilege, wage, and benefits package. Because we have working is Michael, Michael Luz is the past and because they have demonstrated the community the, to raise industrial standards for building service workers in the city. We are a city that support this development team as the impact, one creating another one successful project. We believe those community will improve the life of working family. And for those reasons, 
we encourage the council to approve this project. Thank you. There it goes. There we go. Good morning. My name is Matthew Proclary. I'm the business manager of Teamsters Local 272 that represents over 8,000 parking attendants and, and rental car employees. Thank you, Commission. Uh, thank you, Chairperson and members of the Zoning and Franchise Committee for this, allowing me to testify this morning. Teamster Local 272 prides itself on building and maintaining good union jobs with members from the community who receive full health and pension benefits. We are here today to strongly support 21 East 12 Street parking garage application. Additionally, I, I also want to voice my team's support for good, responsible jobs in the building and maintenance operation by SEIU Local uh, 32BJ. Over the past couple of years, three garages that were closed were in one square block um, from East 12th Street and University to East 13th and University to up to 5th Avenue. There was over over a thousand parking spots lost, and also 25 Teamster jobs. I'd like to uh, close by making a new, I'd like to, hold on one second, close to make a way of a new 21 East 12th Street development project. We lost 25 of these jobs, and we have a commitment from GMC to bring back eight Teamster jobs once the development is completed. Some of the community have raised concerns that the parking garage will increase congestion from people from outside the neighborhood. As history has shown, nothing could be further from the truth. During the operation of the prior garages, there were almost full-time local businesses and residents. On behalf of my hardworking members, I strongly urge the committee to vote in support of this application. Thank you for your time and consideration. Any questions? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, we are also joined by Council Member uh, Constantinidis. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this item. Uh, our next hearing will be on LU 37 and 35 uh, Underhill Avenue rezoning. This application would change an existing R6B zoning district to an R6A uh, C24 district uh, on property located on 35 Underhill Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, the change in zoning district would allow the existing six-story building on the site to convert its ground level parking spaces into commercial space fronting on Washington Avenue. This application is in Council Member Cumbo's district and I will now open the public hearing on LU 37. Uh, Richard L Lobel. Hi, Chair Moya. How are you? They're loading it. Good morning. Once again, my name is Richard Lobel from the law firm of Sheldon Lobel PC, representing the applicant. And I'm joined by Amanda Iannotti from my office as well and I see that we're loading the presentation. Um, by way of background, while the presentation is loading, this is the 35 Underhill Avenue rezoning. It's a relatively minor rezoning. There is a, uh, a block bounded by Underhill Avenue, uh, Dean and Pacific Streets, and Washington Avenue. And the block currently is primarily zoned R6A with a C24 overlay. And so the rezoning seeks solely to rezone a triangular portion of the block, uh, which would allow the entirety of the block to be R6AC24. Um, so the tax map is up there right now. The development site is highlighted in red. It's 35 Underhill Avenue. It is a uh, four and six story residential building. Uh, and the rezoning is solely to allow for the ground floor parking area, which currently houses 15 spaces on the ground floor to be used for a retail store. So the building right now is a legally built building. It is a complying building. There will be no new development that will be engendered by the rezoning. However, in order to allow for the conversion of ground floor parking area to commercial use, 
the building would be required to have additional square footage and the rezoning would accomplish that. So I think if we want to fast forward, you can see this is just a land use map which demonstrates that along Washington Avenue you have a, a lot of commercial use along that corridor. So the zoning map, uh, the zoning change map as you can see on the board now above you uh, currently has an R6A C24 on the majority of that block and there's a tiny little corner on the northeast corner of Underhill Avenue and Dean Street, which is currently R6B, the proposal would, as pursuant to the map on the right, convert that to R6AC24. Um, if you just want to fast forward. Right, so that's the, would that would be the proposed zoning after the change. Um, and so you can keep going. The current zoning is R6B on, on that small portion. The property was rezoned in the 1994 Prospects Heights rezoning and has remained uh, with this split zoning district through today's date. Um, the R6AC24, by covering the entire block, again, will allow for a commercial use to occupy the space that fronts on both Washington and Dean. Um, and this has been a proposal which has had widespread support among the community. So we went through Community Board 8, Land Use and Full Board, and received an approval of Community Board 8 without conditions. The Brooklyn Borough President has supported this application. And in fact, one of the conditions in the Brooklyn Borough President's uh, resolution was that they'd like us to actually expand the space to make it bigger if we can, which we are attempting to do by gaining additional development rights from adjacent parcels. You can keep going. And so this is just the um, existing and proposed floor area calculations. The eventual approval would result in uh, about a 4,000 square foot space on the ground floor, which could again, with additional square footage, be up to 5,000 square feet to be allowed for, for a commercial use. The building, importantly, at the site, the residential tenants support the application and would get uh, eventual approval rights over whatever commercial use went in there. There's been a lot of interest in having a food store, and while it would fall under the threshold for a fresh food store, it's still something that would be welcomed by the community and has been uh, has had a lot of local support. So, uh, in essence, again to to recap, just let me go to the last slide. Um, the rezoning here would result in no proposed new development. It would have the added benefit, in addition to our site, in creating conforming spaces along uh, along Dean Street. There's uh, currently a commercial um, built uh, commercial use on the ground floor on one of those two properties on the southwestern portion of the block that would now become conforming commercial use. And so um, we're, we're hoping that the subcommittee and the full council eventually proceeds to approve the application in its entirety and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. They could all be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are there uh, any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Uh, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this item. And that concludes uh, our meeting for today. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, this meeting. This meeting is now adjourned.